recall that phylogenetic trees are branching diagrams that show evolutionary pathways and relatedness between organisms. Now, each new branch in a phylogenetic tree represents a change in a character trait from a previous ancestor. And this branching is dichotomous. It goes in two possible directions, changing from the ancestor or existing with that same trait. And as traits change, we can assume that new species are being formed. And as more and more changes accumulate in the organism, the evolution of species is actually occurring. So phylograms are scaled and the branch length indicates the amount of time or genetic change that's accumulated. So essentially this is the amount of evolutionary divergence between the groups or the species or whatever's being compared. And those trees without scales are known as cladograms and the branch lengths of the tree are not proportional to you know, any amount of evolutionary change. But I want you to be aware, QCAA seems to use these terms, cladogram and phylogram, pretty much to mean the same thing. So we've used physical traits to, to build visual representations of evolutionary pathways, um, but we know that this isn't the only way we can classify organisms and therefore organise them. And we achieve more very specific outcomes using molecular data. So instead of those simple character traits, we use the DNA, the RNA, the protein sequences, whatever it is, so that we can compare similarities and differences between species. If a protein is really well suited to perform its function and leads to an advantageous trait in an organism, the DNA sequence that codes for it in the production of the protein will remain really conserved over time. So some of the sections of the amino acid, say in hemoglobin protein, that's conserved across multiple species. And because these DNA sequences are conserved, they will continue to be passed down throughout generations and therefore, you know, continue throughout those species. So the species which are distantly related will share the DNA sequence in a particular gene and tiny changes will accumulate over time if nucleotides change within the gene, but the general function of the protein pretty much remains the same. Remember that the features of a cladogram include a tree root or the ancestral lineage. We've got the branches, the lines representing those hypothesized evolutionary pathways. We've got leaves, which are the sort of end point, right, where the specific scientific names are. We've got nodes at places where there is divergence. And we've got outgroups, which are those kinds of organisms that are less likely to be closely related. Right. It's included to show a common ancestor which is older and it links all those groups and we've also got those sister taxa as well. When we add a scale, this needs to be considered as well. And if you notice that at the end of these points, all these branches here, they're actually staggered. It's looking at genetic distance. It's not across a period of time, but you know, it's genetic change there. So in this case, the scale uses substitutions per sequence site. So you might be looking at those conserved regions. So you're accumulating those genetic changes in those conserved regions. Now the evolutionary distance between two nodes can be calculated as the sum of all the horizontal branch lengths. Because these are not all ending at the same point, they're all available now, right? They're all alive species now, or whatever it is, families, but they have all changed in a different amount. So we, if we have a look at say virus three and virus seven, and we want to look at the change between them, we actually have to get out a ruler and sort of measure and add up all the difference between them to see which, you know, is their most common, their closest common ancestor, and then how much they have accrued in terms of change. So we'll be practicing this skill quite a bit in class and it does take a little bit of practice. Okay, so just be aware of that because our main focus here is to interpret data right here, oops, excuse me, to reveal phylogenetic relationships.